WNST, Towson, Baltimore, and AM 1570. We are Baltimore Positive uh, with some wise conversations around here, mixing and matching all month long. Uh, Ravens aren't playing a lot of football this month. Luke is out in Owings Mills. All that brought to you by our friends at Royal Farms. Real fresh, real fast. He'll have you the updates and any breaking news you get first on our WNST tech service. Brought to you by Coons Baltimore Ford. In the meantime, we've got an election. We've got holidays. I'm getting eggnog on the shelves, and it is, it's the season, right? The season of giving, the season of thinking about other people, and Thanksgiving coming around the corner. And I love that about a week ago, I got a note from uh, Jonathan Baylog at, uh, at Goodwill, and I'm wearing my Goodwill shirt here. And he said, hey, man, you got those wise uh, connections and wise markets. We need turkeys. We're doing this thing we do every year. And I said, well, tell me about it. Let's put this thing together. Lisa Rasiniak joins us here. We, man, we were talking Halloween. That was so like last month, last week ago with all the uh, getting gifts and finding things and getting uh, kids together and trick-or-treating and all that stuff. We're already into Thanksgiving, and you guys are planning a really, really big endeavor that, quite frankly, I didn't know enough about. Now that I know about it, I put Wise Markets together to get you guys some turkeys, and you feed a lot, a lot of people before Thanksgiving later on in the month, don't you? This is our 65th year doing this Thanksgiving event, and we serve about 3,000 people uh, every year, less the last two years because of COVID, obviously, but we feed 3,000 people a nice Thanksgiving dinner that they might not otherwise have an opportunity to have. And what's really great about this event is that we connect people to other social services that they may need. So a lot of people that, that come uh, to our dinner may be homeless. They may be food insecure. Um, they may obviously not have a job, low skills, what have you. So well, we it's an opportunity. This... It's really an opportunity, isn't yeah. it? So we have this whole resource fair as people are coming into the convention center in the line. And they can visit all of these booths with uh, social services, including Goodwill, and we can get them connected to services that they may need. Plus, we get them enrolled with Goodwill, and we can help them start getting on their feet. Well, man, that's – I would just say that's so smart. Who comes up with this stuff, these, these brilliant ideas, right? Because I have – uh, on several occasions on Thanksgiving, uh, you know, I'm a Tony Robbins guy, right? I'm, there's, there's no, you know, there's no doubt about that. I fire walk back in 1994. I've talked about how it changed my life. He's always done a basket brigade Thanksgiving. He grew up poor without food. Someone left a basket at his door. It's, you know, and for, for all of his career, Thanksgiving has been his thing. And I was involved with a group here that, um, had me to a church several times in West Baltimore off Pennsylvania Avenue, uh, near Penn North. This is, oh man, beginning of my marriage I, I did this for several years and there it, in many cases and this is an interesting because you, you always want to volunteer there were more volunteers than there were people there there were so many people that wanted to volunteer wow. that I didn't feel I there was nothing for me to do you know what I mean there it just you were other than talk to people greet people I was doing all of that but as far as serving there were more helping hands than they needed which I thought was just a beautiful thing but the thing you're talking about was the missing ingredient is I saw a lot of people. I saw a lot of despair. I saw a lot of challenges, right? But I didn't I didn't know where the door would be to say, what are we doing tomorrow? How are these people getting a meal tomorrow and a week from Monday? And it's Thanksgiving and it's great and it's beautiful, but we're, it's cold out. You know, what, exactly. what else can we do for these people? And I didn't – tell me more about this event and how folks can be involved. If I've inspired them in any way to give a couple hours, roll your sleeves up, I'm going to do it. It is the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. The one I've always done has been on Thanksgiving Day, but this is the day before, right? This is the day before at the Baltimore Convention Center. Um, we have anywhere between three and 350 volunteers every year that come out. And not only do they serve, but we help them um, – bring the meals to their table if they have disabilities we help we have runners that help them get their drinks get dessert um, we obviously need people to help clean tables as we turn them over and get more volunteers seated and then at the end if they have leftovers they want to take with them we have a whole wrapping station and we have had some other um, organizations come and actually give out coats at the end for people who you know getting ready for the winter winter season and need um, some warmth, <clears throat> pardon me. So it really is all about not only being charitable, giving back to the community as an organization, 
um, but also about giving people a chance to um, get connected to services they need and, you know, really give them a hand up, which is, you know, our slogan for a hundred years um, instead of a handout. So we do, we do do the handout with the Thanksgiving dinner, but we want to also incorporate a hand up and, and get people connected to, you know, housing and, um, you know, other services that they may need so they can come back to us and maybe come back a year later and be a volunteer when they've got a job and they're secure and they have an apartment and have a place to live. And um, so it really is a, it's a tremendous event. Um, so many kids come, it really kind of touches your heart. And when you think that you're helping their parents, their families um, get on their feet, it's a great opportunity for, for, for all of us when we're sitting around the next day with our families to feel like we've done something good. Well, I'll tell you what, everybody out there, Lisa Rosiniak's here. She's CEO of uh, Goodwill and, and our local partners here for all that we do. You can find her out in front of Baltimore Positive as well. Uh, the date is the 23rd of November. I want look at, look at your calendar right now. It's getting up on it. Let's make some commitments here. Uh, it is Wednesday the 23rd. Everybody's committed on Thanksgiving on the 24th, the football and turkey and all that. But if you do have some time, uh, is this an all day or when does this start? What's my level of commitment here, Lisa? What, what have I signed up for? Because I have radio in my calendar on Wednesday. I'm like, well, I'm going to have to move Bill Cole, going to have to, you know, move Rosenfeld, you know, move some things around. But but I'm all in and, and you know, I know my wife usually works that day, but we're not travelers on Thanksgiving. So being able to, to give back and do something, I'm not even doing a crab cake tour that week. So um, what time should I be there? What kinds of things could I volunteer to do? What are you going to have? I love wrapping food. I make a nice turkey, but you don't want me back in the kitchen. Not not on this one. I don't yeah, the center plate at the convention center actually cooks and prepares all the food. They, they put it out in uh, food stations for us. Um, but we have two shifts of volunteers, one at eight o'clock because we do, we blow up balloons. We make it festive for people, um, get the table set up, get the food station set up. Um, and then we have a second shift that comes a little later at, I think, uh, 10 or so. And we go over the instructions about portion, um, portioning out the amounts of food to give to people, et cetera, um, and then to serve. And, and help clean up. So we have two shifts, uh, one's at eight, one's I think at 10, um, but we'd love to have as many people as we can come out and help. Put me on gravy duty. I'll make sure everybody gets a little extra. You know, you have a little extra gravy. Uh, at least for you guys at this time of year, and and I know we did Halloween and everybody got dressed up. For, for holidays and holiday shopping and the things that go on, I know you have a big online presence that maybe wasn't there a number of years ago. For folks out looking for gifts and things like that, I, I would think this is um, this is an amazing time as well for storefronts and, and people, for, for traffic, people being out and about and coming in and, and supporting what you do in the, in the main storefronts that we, we know about. Yeah, and they don't even know really what they're doing when they come into our stores. I mean, they're coming in to look for, you know, some holiday sweaters and um, gosh, we have whole racks of, you know, people have the parties, the ugly sweater parties. We have whole racks dedicated where we have our staff pick out literally ugly sweaters that are on display for people when they come in and go to those parties. And then, of course, you know, the economy is tough. People are looking for, you know, nice outfits to wear for the holidays. We have, you know, our nicer, obviously, stuff. Um, and the collectors. I mean, our online business is fantastic for collectors um, on shopgoodwill.com and uh, doing a great, great business. And what people don't realize is when they shop at Goodwill, they're also helping the community, helping people get jobs, get skills and get on their feet. Um, so it's a great it's a great marriage of um really helping people find great values, collector's items, and also um, being able to help people in, in their own community. All right, I'm up in here right now. I got some belt buckles. There's a Park City belt buckle, uh, lots of Western belt buckles and pewter belt buckles, but I don't have any rock belt buckles. But every week I have I have you on, I, I, I try to feature one of my, my new Pacifica rock belt buckles. Talk about collector's items. Uh, I got this one. This is a little bit of a holy grail one, so I don't don't judge it. It's a little bit like Van Halen themselves, a little bit chipped up around the edges, but still rock and roll. So it's not in perfect shape. It's not like an heirloom collectible, but it really is good looking. And if I if I get it and hit the light the right way, you'll see that this is a uh, this is a beautiful Van Halen belt buckle. It's got a little chip on it. You can see there, but I'm I'm sporting this one. This is my newest one, right? 
You wear it, wear it when you come for Thanksgiving. You know, I'm going to do that. I'll wear my chipped up. So I'm going to be there on the 23rd, volunteering and helping out. Give me an update on XL Center and everything going on for the holidays, including I, I still have more stuff to give you. I, I took a carload over, but I'm still finding more wow. stuff, especially around the radio station. Um, a lot of Raven stuff, a lot of, you know, old school Terp stuff, different stuff that's just been in boxes that sat here that I know will find a great home at, at Goodwill. Right. So um, I think that I, Actually, before you go on, I have a challenge for you. A new okay. belt buckle challenge. I thought okay. of a Baltimore band that you probably don't have that you need to find. Okay. Uh, do you remember Kicks? Oh, yeah. I had Steve Whiteman on the show recently. Steve actually, back at, at the turn of the century, I've been on the air 31 years on December 13th, but oh. I was eight or 10 years into doing this and really wasn't, I was not properly trained, right? So I was screaming. I had my headsets too low to, you know, that if you turn your headset up, it's a little bit of a trick. You can talk instead of yell because you sound loud in your headset. You trick yourself a little bit. So you save your voice. I was hoarse from doing my show, 20 hours of live radio a week back in the 90s. And I went to Steve Whiteman for voice lessons. He was training right over by where the barn and uh, Das Beer Hall, right in Harford Road. There was a music center there. And he gave voice lessons in the basement. And he taught me how to sing or speak from my diaphragm to not speak from my voice oh, box. Wow. And when you see Steve Whiteman to this day, and he's a little older than me, I won't tell you that, but he's still, <laughs> I saw him at the, at the heritage fair in Dundalk um, three months ago, still is brilliant because he's classically trained and he is a scientist about warming up. He had me like drinking warm water, never anything cold, never anything dairy on the air. It, it builds like all of these things that he taught me. Steve is a God, Steve Whiteman. So you need me to come up with a kicks belt buckle. Is that what you need me to do? That's my latest challenge for you. Yep. <laughs> you challenged me on the Ravens two weeks ago and I'm like, Ravens have plenty of belt buckles. They're purple. They got to you know, no, no Ravens like Keith Brewer and Rob Fahey. So yeah. I actually, you inspired me to be in touch with Keith Brewer. I've known Keith 30 years from back when I was, a. um, he had me sing on a song uh, when the Ravens came to town called I'm a Raven Maniac. So I'm actually, I sang on that and we played it on the radio a lot. But R-A-V-Y-N-S, I asked him if they ever made, like this Van Halen belt buckle, if they ever made a Ravens one. And he said, no, nah, we never cashed in on that craze. And I said, well, maybe, <laughs> you know, I'm good. At, my wife is artsy. So you don't, she's crafty. Watch her. So if I can get some blank belt buckles and we would do a Baltimore series we could do a kicks, a child's play, a Ravens, maybe a Rat Child America, maybe some Never Never for Spike and some other guys. Yeah. So, so because they all have great logos, there's nothing better than a rock band logo, right? Yeah. All Absolutely. right, well, you're inspiring me here for the holidays. Get me all crafty. Liz Rasiniak's here from Goodwill. Uh, we now have a spot for her that she doesn't even know about. Out on the front of BaltimorePositive.com uh, for all of our clients and, uh, and 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 folks out in the community doing good things and lifting people up. Give me an XL update because I know that that's sort of the holy grail. The thing's coming down the line here, and when that gets going, you're literally building a school and a site to give people a hand up, not a hand out, as you always say. Yeah, so we um, we moved our headquarters. We're out at uh, Baltimore Gateway uh, off of 95, and we vacated 222 East Redwood because we're about to do major renovations to create an adult high school. With the drop-in daycare center, we'll be ready to open September 2023, um, but we've had architects in there. We're, engineers are in there. It's going to be beautiful. So you remember where Uncle Lee's was, and, and right next to that's like the uh, – uh, it's a – it's a, a, a kebab joint now. That was always um, mix. Street. Correct. A million percent. So did you know I, my first gig was on South Street at the News American? It's now the empty lot across from the Renaissance. It's the between like where the Chick-fil-A and the Shake Shack is. Really? That empty lot. Oh, so you didn't know this. So that was the Baltimore News American. And in 1984, my first gig in January 1984, I was 15 years old. I went down there for an internship. I took the bus and I worked at the News American in 1984 and 85. I left on January 6th of 1986 uh, and it went out of business. I drove it out in May. It was gone. May of 86. Uh, the News American folded after you know, 120 years of publishing with 
Hearst. But that corner was legendary for newspaper folks. And up the street where uh, the Royal Farms is was Burks, and that was the hangout for all the newspaper yeah. people. Yeah. So not just the News America, but the Sun people hung out there too. And a lot of the News American people went on to work at the Sun like I did. Uh, it was sort of a graduation process that put the News American out of business. But that that uh, kebab it, it place there was was a breakfast place. It was Nick the Greek's breakfast place. It's called Town and Country Restaurant for a hundred years. And I ate breakfast in there three days a week for eight years. And it's like literally across the street from where you're building this incredible school that's going to really shine and really help people. Absolutely. I can't wait. It's it's a dream for me because we really have um, seen so many of, of the people that we serve in the city have literacy issues and, you know, they can't get into good skills training programs, even to become a plumber, an electrician, any of the trades, um, even, you know, working in a hospital as a nursing assistant, you need to have at least an eighth grade reading and math level. And that's the struggle. And so we have adults that need this remediation. Now they're going to be able to get a high school diploma um, and they're going to be able to move into those skills training programs. But what I think is really exciting for me personally is that, you know, we, our city is just, you know, has so many issues. And I think part of what makes it important is that people who have uh, these low skills, they can't help their children with their schoolwork, right? And their, their kids get discouraged. And so it, it really perpetuates this whole generational, you know, feeling of hopelessness. And so what I really believe is that uh, this high school is going to change a, a lot of people's lives. And for generations, I think it'll make a difference. Well, I'm, I'm proud to be working with you and talking about it. I'm looking forward to coming down there. But I got a lot of history in that block uh, down on Redwood and South Street, uh, right two blocks in the Inner Harbor. I mean, right in the picture, right? the other side, this side. I get my left and my right confused when I do this out on the green screen. <laughs> Lisa Ciniax here. She's from Goodwill. You can shop at Goodwill, of course, donate to Goodwill. But more than that, we're putting this event together on the 23rd. Uh, if you want a hand up, a help up, throw me a note, Ness at BaltimorePositive.com. I'll be happy to connect you with Jonathan, Lisa, and all the folks down at Goodwill that are going to be putting together a uh, a beautiful event to uh, to uh, kick off the holidays and uh, and help some folks out uh, less fortunate than us, which is you know that's tis the season. So uh, we're getting ready for all that. Lisa, I will uh, get up with you in a couple of weeks here. Hopefully the Ravens on the other side of this bye week here. Uh, we'll be through a World Series. I hope the Philadelphia people aren't greasing the poles and climbing them up there. Uh, and as I know we we get in on the real season of giving and the importance of things that are going on. I'm looking forward to seeing you Thanksgiving week. Thank you. All right, there she goes, Lisa Rosiniak. Uh, she cannot have my my Van Halen belt buckle, but uh, I got it. I, I'm going to fix the damage part of that. Uh, we're going to be out doing the Maryland Crab Cake Tour this week in Dundalk. We're going to be at the Fountain at Drug Cities, where I got all my wrestling magazines when I was a kid, all my baseball cards, even all my videotapes back in the 1980s. I'll, although I, you know what? They're going to buy me a crab cake on Friday for all the times I didn't rewind and I had to pay 50 cents. So I'm going to get even with them on Friday. Chuck and the folks over there. I got great guests coming by uh, this week as well. Uh, Todd Crandall's coming by. He's running for office. I went to high school with him. We lost the great Alan Stockett, who was my English professor um, last weekend. Uh, just an incredible outpouring of love in the Dundalk community. So we're going to honor Alan Stockett on Friday. We're going to be at Drug City. It's all brought to you by our friends at the Maryland Lottery, in conjunction with our friends at Window Nation, and of course supported by our friends at Goodwill. I am Nestor. We are WNST AM 1570 Towson, Baltimore. We never stop talking. Baltimore positive.